In this problem, they ask, what is the magnitude of a fourth force that would make the vector sum zero? So they give you this graph, and what we have to do is we have to um, separate these into their x and y components. So why we do that, and why we can't just start canceling right now, is because they're made up of different amounts of x and y components. So they're not exactly the same thing. So the metaphor I came up with this is cats and dogs. So if you have if you have uh, cats on the x-axis and dogs on the y-axis, um, let's say we created a hybrid, right, a cat dog. So we have 50% cats and 50% dogs. So and on this side we have 80 percent. We made a hybrid that's 80% cat and 20% dog. So we can't we can if we want to find the overall how many cats and dogs we used. Um, we can't just subtract these because they're two different things. We would get we would get um, really different numbers. But if we separated them and set, um, saw exactly how many cats uh, we used and how many dogs we used, then we can start uh, we can start um, seeing exactly how many cats and how many dogs we used. So that's what we're doing over here. We're just separating them into their components so we can see exactly how much of the x and how much of the y components we have. So then we can determine what it would take to make the entire thing zero. So let's start. Let's start with A. So let's find the X and Y component of A. So for that, we'll do some a little bit of trig. So here we have that. All I did to make this triangle is just shift the Y component over here. And then I just brought the angle here. And, and then the, the length is just this. So what we're going to do is just some trig. So here the side opposite is going to be opposite and then it's adjacent and then the hypotenuse. So we have Sokotoa, so we have sine of the angle opposite and so since it's opposite over hypotenuse if we're solving for y it'll be opposite over hypotenuse then we just plug in any numbers we have so it'll be a hundred so we just plug in a hundred then what we do is uh, now we just multiply each side by a hundred and we get fifty equals the opposite side. So then we go back, make sure we, what is the opposite side. Okay, so the opposite side is the y-axis. So it's going to be the, and since we're solving for a, it's going to be the y component of a, it's going to be 50. And then you look to see what are the units, right? It's going to be, it's going to be newtons because that's where they were using here. Um, so, so the units will be that. And then you also, um, since this isn't the final answer, um, but you can still think about it. You can think about the units. Uh, I mean the sig figs, significant figures. So we can go with the, uh, three because that's usually um, the norm. But since we um, since we are uh, we still have more to do, uh, you can put as many sig figs as possible because like uh, this isn't your final answer. So but I put three because that's usually the case. That's usually the norm of three significant figures. So here. Here we have a uh, cosine 30 degrees is what I did here is I'm solving for the x component and the x component is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. We just look at our sig, we have adjacent over hypotenuse, that's going to be cosine. So we have cosine of 30 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse, that's, we just plug in the number we have and we get cosine of 30 equals adjacent over 100 because I just got the 100 from here and then just multiply each side by 100, we get 86.6 .6 equals adjacent. We make sure what is that adjacent, okay, adjacent is the x-axis, so it's going to be the x component of A, because that's what we're solving right now. It's going to be 86.6, .6. I put three sig figs, because that's the norm, and then um, it's, uh, uh, and then for now, three sig figs for now, and then the units are gonna be newtons. Okay, so let's go down to B. So um, if we see B here, all I did to make this triangle was shift the x-axis up and then here to make that triangle, we have the angle and 80 newtons. So let's go down. So we have B. So this, uh, this is my triangle. And once again, do some trig. So this is your angle. So this side's gonna be opposite because it's directly opposite. And so this will be adjacent, this will be hypotenuse. So you have your length, which is 80 newtons. So now we just, let's say we're solving for the x component. This is x. Um, 
So we have opposite over hypotenuse. So that's sine. So sine of 30 degrees equals. Oh, and this is uh, this is important to remember. When you're doing this, when you're doing this, you have to pay attention to uh, what part of the x-axis you're on. Here we didn't really have to worry about it because since this side and this side are positive, um, everything's going to be positive. But here, what you have to think about is that this side is actually going to be negative. So the x component of b is going to be negative. And you can also predict for c, you can see that the x component will be negative and the y component will be negative. Because this has to be made up of this x and this y, and both of these parts are negative. Here, only the x component will be negative, and the uh, y component will actually be positive. So keeping that in mind, what we'll do is we'll put a negative um, here. Because since it's um, on this part of the uh, graph, since it's on this part of the graph, uh, this part's negative, so therefore... Um, Therefore, it'll be negative here. So, just keeping that in mind, we have negative um, the negative opposite. We have our hypotenuse, which is 80, and then multiply it by each side, and we get negative 40. So then our b x component will be negative 40, and make sure uh, which what that is because the o is the x axis. So we can confirm that this will be 40. Um, the negative just came from here. And that just indicates direction, since it's this side is negative, we're just indicating that it's on this side by showing the negative side. Units are, are newtons, and I just put three sig figs. So going down, we continue, and we have cosine of 30 degrees. How I got cosine is just um, uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, and then that's cosine. And then um, all I did was plug in hypotenuse, which is... 80. So once we do that, we multiply by 80, we get 69.28, and then that's the B component. Now we make sure if it's positive or negative, and we look at it, so it's it's pointing up, so since it's pointing up, it's actually going to be positive, so we don't have to worry about it. And then it'll be newtons, because that's the units we're using. And then I put four sig figs here, because I didn't want a rounding error. Um, here, I didn't have to worry about that because there was no rounding, but I put 4 here because, uh, so I, I wouldn't have a rounding error. Now, continuing on, the final one, which is C. Uh, let me show you that uh, for component C. Um, what we have is pointing down. How I made the triangle is all I did was shift the y-axis here, and so I made a triangle like that. And it'll be 53 degrees and 40 newtons. So the 40 newtons will be the um, hypotenuse. So going down, we have this. And it'll be 40 newtons. And the degrees, 50, 53 degrees here. And so what will happen is this side will be opposite. This side will be adjacent. We have Sokotoa. So if we're solving for the y component, it'll be opposite over hypotenuse. And once again, remember that since it's on, since it's on uh, the graph, we have our graph, since it's pointing straight down, it's going to be on the negative part of the y-axis. So remember, it's going to be negative. And so you, I've just plugged in the hypotenuse and multiplied by 40 on each side. You're going to get negative 31.95. So the cy component will be negative 31.95. And then all I did was just put four, four sig figs here um, because I didn't want a rounding error. And then newtons will be our, um, our units. The negative just indicates direction because since it's pointing down, it'll, that's the direction it'll be pointing down and that's going to be negative because that's the negative part of the y-axis. Okay, moving on. Uh, we have, since we just solved for the y component, now we're going to solve for the x component. The x component is also negative because... If we look at the direction, that's going to be negative. So it's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. That's going to be cosine. So cosine of the angle. And since it was on the negative part, it's going to be negative A. And we have cosine 53 degrees equals negative A over 40. All I did was just plug in the 40 here. And then, and then I multiplied each side by 40, get, giving us 20, negative 24.07. So... Uh, to make sure what this is, 
this was the adjacent, so that's correlated with the x component. So that's going to be the c x component, negative 24.07. Units are n. I put four sig figs here to prevent uh, rounding error. And then um, the direction, which is just, it's going to be negative because it's, um, it's on the negative part of the x-axis. Okay, so now we've found every x and y component of each of the a, b, and c. So now what we do is we just go back and note all these down. So you can write this down if you want to try to. So we're just going to note, okay, the a, y component, a, x component, and the original thing, what we're doing, we're just finding the x and y of each of these. So the x and y of A, the x and y of B, uh, x and y of B, and finally the x and y of C. Here we go. And we go down. So if you got all that, what all I did was just... Um, all I did was just plug them in into this graph. Uh, so we have our x-axis here, y-axis here. So all I did was, see, if it was positive, it would be pointing up, because that's the positive part of the um, graph. So it would be the a y component's po uh, pointing up, because it's positive. The y component of b is pointing up, because it's positive. Uh, since this is the positive part of the x-axis, um, this is going to be the a x the x component of a the c component of y is negative so it's um so it's going to be pointing down because that's the y the that's the the part that's negative on the y axis since this is negative it's going to be pointing down the c x component is left so it's going to be um negative therefore it's going to be pointing that way let me just get rid of this just so i don't confuse you um and then, and then here it's pointing negative 40 here to the left um, because it's also on the x-axis and it's negative. Okay, so now we have everything we need. So since these are on the same axis now, since they're the same thing, we can now add them up. So because they're, the, they're on the same axis, they're both positive, now we can add these up, we can combine these. It's good. So what I got was when you add these two up, when you add these two up, you get 119.28. All I did here was add these two negatives, and I got negative 64.07. And I just retained um, everything from the previous thing. So, what do we do now? Since, since these are on the same axis now, since they're exactly the same, um, as in my metaphor, since they're this... Um, I guess if it's the same cats and dogs, um, they can now cancel because they're they're on the same axis. So now they can cancel. So this will be sub, um, you're just going to add it to this. So it's going to be 119.28 uh, minus 31.95. So it, and if you think about it, okay, so this is a weaker force, right? Because if uh, let's say 119 people are pulling here and only 31 people are pulling in the reverse direction. Um, this side's going to win, so that means that the overall thing will be pointing up. Here, since um, there's 86 people here and only 64 people here, um, the 86 people are going to win. Uh, for example, if it was like a tug of war, um, the 86 people are going to win because only 64 people are here. So the overall force will be 87.3. All I did was, all I did was add 119 to uh, to this number. And this, I just added these two together. And so I got 187.33 uh, in, um, in the up direction and 22.53 to the right. So now, back to the original problem. Back to the original problem. It said, what is the magnitude of a fourth force that would make the vector sum zero? So now we found the total force in both the x and y component of the three forces that we we um, originally had. We found the x and y and the total direction of these. Now we want to make that zero, okay? So we want to make this zero. So all I did was I put in the opposite direction negative because I want to make, I want to cancel this out. Uh, in here, to the left, I made it negative 
so I can cancel this out. So if you add these up, it'll become zero, right? So now what they wanted was, since we have these two, they want the vector that would um, make this. Because this is just the y and x component. So let's do that. So here, here we have, here we have the, um, uh, I just redrew it. Uh, I have the x component and the y component. So the vector is going to be right here because it, that's where it has to be because the, um, the x and y are here, so the vector has to be there. Now, uh, now all I did was I shifted this here to make a um, triangle. So now we can do um, the Pythagorean theorem because that's what we want. Magnitude is length. So I'm just going to use the Pythagorean theorem and we're going to get, I'm just going to do that, plug it in the each side and get 90.2 newtons. And remember, um, since the original one had, since the original had 100 newtons, let me go back to the problem. Since it had um, 100 newtons, 4 sig figs, 3 sig figs, and 3 sig figs, we're going to use the least, and it's going to be 3 sig figs. So going back to this, uh, okay. So we have 3 sig figs. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's our magnitude after all of that hard work. So we found our magnitude. So there's a second part to this problem. And that's find the direction of the fourth force counterclockwise from the x-axis. And when they say direction, that doesn't mean like north or west. That means an angle. So find the direction means find the angle. And they said counterclockwise from the x-axis. So you start at the x-axis and counterclockwise until this vector. So the vector here was all the way over here, right? Um, so all I did was put it on a graph, and we want this angle. So how would we calculate that? Well, how we calculate it is by, um, instead of calculating like this, which would be hard, what we can do is we can have this little triangle solve it and then add it to 180 degrees. Because 180 degrees is a semicircle. So continue, continuing on, all I did was redraw that triangle, and we're solving for this little angle right here. So we have opposite over adjacent. We look at that, opposite over adjacent is tangent, but since we're solving for an angle, it's going to be inverse of tangent, or it's going to be otherwise called arctangent. So it's opposite over adjacent, and it's going to be opposite, which is negative 87.33, over adjacent, which is negative 22.53. And then finally, we're, we're in the, your actual calculator, it'll look like this, and you'll get 75.5 degrees. But then always, when you get an answer, ask yourself this. What is this answer, and what does it mean? So if we look at it, all right, 75.5, is this what they want? You go back to the problem, and they said, find the direction of the fourth force counterclockwise from the exit axis. So we just found this little one, but they want the entire angle. So we go back to our problem and we see that this is 180 degrees, this is 180 degrees. So all we found was this little angle right here. So since a semicircle is 180 degrees, what we do is we add it. So 180 plus 75.5 will equal 256 degrees. And this will be the sig figs, um, three sig figs. And that will be that'll be it. And make sure your your um, your calculators and degree modes because that will affect the answer. So I hope that helped. And thanks for watching.